Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about Kepler's equation for elliptical orbits. Kepler's equation for elliptical orbits is a relationship between the mean anomaly, the centric anomaly, and the centricity. To understand better this equation, we are going to take a look at the following chart. In the x-axis, we have the centric anomaly, and in the y-axis, we have the mean anomaly. For a circular orbit, the mean anomaly and the centric anomaly are exactly the same. So in the chart, we will see a straight line. But for elliptical orbits, the centricity will bend the straight line into an S-shaped curve. Kepler's equation is very useful to solve two problems. One is how to calculate the time after passing the periapsis when you know the true anomaly. And the other problem is the opposite, is how to calculate the true anomaly when you know the time after passing the periapsis. In the first problem, if you know the true anomaly, you can obtain directly the centric anomaly. And from that, using Kepler's equation, you will get directly the mean anomaly. And with the mean anomaly, you can obtain the time after passing the periapsis. In the second problem, if you know the time after passing the periapsis, you can calculate the mean anomaly. But you cannot use Kepler's equation directly to obtain the centric anomaly. You will have to rewrite it in this way and then obtain the roots of this function. To do this, you can use an iterative process like the Newton's method. And after you get some degree of precision for the centric anomaly, you can obtain directly the true anomaly. 